you've checked the door for traps, you find none, and you open the door into the underground crypt and enter the realm of the undead. You search many passages, finding crypts full of undead denizens. Skeletons abound in this realm. The cleric is able to turn many of them, but the fighters have to deal with the rest. The heroes collect in the center room, fighting off these undead abominations. They find many crypts, and unfortunately, in one there is a mummy. At this point, they decide to flee. Racing for the bridge exit, their passage is blocked. Will they escape the crypt? G'day and welcome to the next episode of Tech Adept Crafts. I'd like to welcome all the new subscribers, particularly my year 12 music class, thank you very much, and the rock music class. Guys, the patronage of you guys really means a lot, thank you. Uh, now that school is back, I will say that the videos will be slightly less prolific in their turnover. I am running out of all of the stuff that I filmed during the holidays, but I will try to keep going. Speaking of new videos, if you like the scene here, this is all scenery from Hearst Arts. Uh, they make um, latex molds and you cast this stuff out of plaster. And I'm very happy to do a video of that later. If you'd like to see that, please leave a comment down below and uh, give me a shout out for the Hearst Arts molds. Today's video, however, is the quintessential bad guy in D&D, a skeleton. Lots and lots of skeletons needed for a good D&D game. And I've painted up a batch here from Reaper Bones. Uh, Reaper Miniatures makes some fantastic miniatures, but their Kickstarters lately are uh, under the white plastic, which is fairly, fairly flexible. If you notice here, like it's flexible. Now that is a painted model, and I have no qualm about bending that. No worries. Reaper Bones, great minis, and these plastic ones are so durable. Hit like, hit subscribe, leave a comment. I will say one thing, if we get to 100, um, 100 subscribers, I'd love to do a, a live stream. Something different, something new, let's give it a go. So if we hit 100 subscribers, I'll do a live stream and paint up maybe one of the character figures for D&D. That, um, That'll be a challenge. I am not the fastest painter, but um, I love to get in for the detail. All right, enjoy the video. See you at the end. Cheers. All right, the miniature is undercoated. This is a bit of a cheat. I did use a Army Painter Bone Spray. So the miniature has been undercoated with a bone color. We are now painting Yushabdi Bone, which is a Citadel color. And we're just repainting over all of the bone just to give it a nice even coat. Even though the undercoat is bone color, I would still always paint the, the same color back over as it does blend a little easier with the washes later. I'm painting up two models here because the first one is a fairly simple one with um, very few details, whereas this second model has a few extra elements like uh, clothing and armor and a few other things that we can discuss. Doing the base next. The reason why I do the base next is because when you're holding the miniature, you are going to rub paint off. So I do the base as it's the easiest part to touch up later with what uh, has been rubbed off. These are being based with the gray that I have mentioned in a few videos. It is a mix of just plain craft paint white and black and this goes over the entire base reaper do say that these miniatures come ready straight for painting but sometimes you do need to clean them up and these were some small parts that i missed i've stuck these miniatures down on mdf circular bases that i've cut myself they do tend to soak up the paint so i have been adding little bits of water as i go to that paint it just helps it smooth on. I'm using a base brush from Citadel just to get a nice even coating very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. 
After cleaning up the model, I'm just touching up again the bone color, those bits that were missed. Moving on to Gun Metal from Army Painter Warpaints. This goes over anything that would be armor or weapon, anything metallic is going to have this color. This is to give a strong iron color to that arms and armor. You don't have to do them iron though. You could paint that gold. You could paint that brass. Uh, you could paint that a, a brilliant silver if you really wanted to. Anything would work there for the metal. You could also try the non-metallic metallic painting. For these as basic bad guys, I keep it nice and simple. Heavy Sienna from Game Color. This one is to go on anything that is wood. I do a dark wood color, as I believe that shows up really well against the bone color. Clothing, I'm doing the Citadel base color, Macrag Blue. Now you could do any sort of color you'd like here, but one of my main human armies that I used to play for Warhammer Fantasy were Middenheimers, which had blue clothing. So I tend to do a lot of my undead using the blue clothing to make it look like people are fighting their former comrades or maybe even their ancestors. painting the shield here a plain blue I'm not going to go through and do any sort of icons on there as that does leave it up to a little bit of imagination later as to who they might belong to but you could easily paint in some iconography to tie the models together Again, leather brown, and as the name suggests, this is going to go on anything leather. So that would be the straps around the shield, holding it onto the arm, belts. Uh, if that was a, a model armed with a bow, it'd go on their quiver for me. I might even paint the shafts of arrows using this color, just to give a different shade to spear hafts or the backs of shields.
time for a touch-up of anything that I might have missed over using that Yushabti bone. At this point, we're almost finished. As I said, it was a quick one. Here comes to Agrax Earthshade, a shade from Citadel. This is the wash to put over the entire model. Every part of the model except that MDF base, but still applying that to the gray plastic base. Be nice and liberal here. This is going to settle down into all of the recesses in the bone and give it a real dirty feel, like as if the, uh, the creature has just crawled out of the grave. That's going to take some time to dry. So in the meantime, here are some important brush care tips. Always wash your brush out carefully, ensuring that you get rid of any paint that may be settling right down at the end of the bristles towards the brush, uh, towards the handle part. Then make sure that you can twirl it into a point. This will help to keep the brush head together so it doesn't splay out like, uh, like somebody's bad hair day. Field Grey Army Painter War Paints. This is the only dry brushing that I'm doing on this model over the base of the model. This will tie it in with the rest of my collection that all have this sort of basing done on them. I'm not going overboard on highlighting and uh, any sort of detailing on these models as they will be only on the table for a very short time if your cleric knows what he's doing. A good turning undead and they will be they will take longer to paint than they will last on the table so no point going into a huge amount of detail that people aren't really going to have time to notice there's the collection the two models that you see at the front are the two that I painted for the demonstration plus all of the others that I painted at the same time in total, I reckon this project took about two hours at the most. Now that might not seem like a lot of time, or it might seem like a lot of time for some of you, but for painting models, for me, that was pretty quick. Great little collection of skeletons there from Reaper Bones. Loving all of the dynamic poses. You can see in the background the collection of different paints. They are almost in order of what I used except that there was bone right at the start. So you can see there uh, my water pot, two brushes that I used, a Eschen Grey Gun Metal Heavy Sienna, the Macrag Blue Leather Brown Yushabti Bone Agrax Earthshade and Field Grey. There you go, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Reaper Bones Skeletons. Quick, simple, bad guys to whack out on the table and have some D&D fun. These guys are, as I said, from Reaper Bones. There are also some uh, character figures that you saw earlier. These are also from the Reaper Bones. There's a lot of leftover figures to paint. So if you would like me to do a live stream painting a character figure, let's get to 100 subscribers. Uh, pass this on to your friends, family, Get them all involved because this is a really fun hobby to have everyone involved in. I'd like to say a shout out to Ailish, one of my year 12 girls. She has designed the Tech Priest logo that you'll see at the end of the video. And uh, she has done a fantastic job for that and I really appreciate her doing it.
see you later. Make sure you hit subscribe, hit like, make a comment. See you in the next video. Cheers.